If, so the question was, if you were if, a company... We're, we're a company, partnership, yep. building, would that be our logo or a picture of both of us? So it would be a company the, page you're one, talking about, which is, which is yeah. a different profile, and it would be the logo, but you're always going to get the best results on LinkedIn through a personal profile. Yeah, okay. And so you both have one individually as well. Cool. Because it's a social media site, right? People want to buy from individuals. They don't want to buy from logos. Um. I've got the profile set up for our company, which I'm not active on it, but I've done it, right? I've set it up. Um, and I've got a picture of the four of us as a family, because it's a family business. Do you think that's okay? So is it, did you say it was a company page or a personal profile? No, a company, as in Crocker's Paint and Wallpaper. So I put yeah. the four of us as a family as a photo. Do you yeah, think that, that's rather fine. Rather than the logo? Yeah, it's fine. It's just that you're not going to get as good a results when you try to connect with people or post content. You should have a personal profile as well. So how do you... Do, you, do they link? Yeah. Okay. I don't yeah, know enough link. about it clearly, but... <laughs> just, just asking. Great question. Can I add to that? Yeah. Because I don't... I've got both personal and company and I'd put no content on either. Yeah. Um, but if I was to start putting content on about glass because I want to attract glass sales, do I just do it on my personal... Like, do I just put job stuff on my personal or do I replicate that on the business, the company one as well? Like, what? how do you differentiate? I, I understand what you're saying about people want to buy from people. So, you know, to have to maintain two pages, is it worth it? Is it... Yeah. Yeah, well, if you're going to pick one, pick your personal profile. Because there's just not as many people will even see it on the company page. You can share it. But again, if you post it organically from your personal profile, you're going to get more views. More people will see it. Sharing stuff on LinkedIn doesn't have much, doesn't give you much more reach. You'll notice, like, if you share someone else's content, it doesn't get that many eyeballs on it. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of questions and you're more than welcome to jump in as we go. There's always a lot of questions around this LinkedIn stuff. All right, so the About section at the top of the profile, I know you can't read that, but it is the most important part. If people are going to look at anything on your profile, you want to make sure that you have keywords in there that are, that are relevant to your customers. So what might your customers be searching for on LinkedIn? Because people will use it as a search engine. If I'm looking for an accountant, I could go to Google and I could look for an accountant in Sydney and I'll see all the ads and I can you know, choose which website I'm going to look at or I could look at who's in my network already by searching on LinkedIn. And so you know, if you're in my network and you're an accountant in Sydney, you want to make sure you're showing up at the top of search results. You do that by, through optimizing it with keywords. Um, just to give you an idea of the difference it can ma and make, um, this is a profile, uh, graph from a profile we optimized. It went from having zero profile views per day to having 91 profile views a day. You can imagine if you amplify that through multiple people throughout the team, th th you can very quickly get more traffic on your LinkedIn profiles than you can on a website if they're optimized effectively. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> it's good to know. All right, social proof. So social proof is about building trust. So when I used to go on holiday, right, in um, somewhere new, and I wanted to find a restaurant to eat out in, I would literally walk out of the hotel, and I'd walk down the street, and I'd see like a restaurant on the left-hand side that'd be empty, no people in it. I'd see one on the right-hand side that's full of people. Which one do you think would have better food? Okay, one full of people, right? And so these days, I don't bother walking out on the street, I just look on TripAdvisor and I look at how many reviews there are and, and what's the average rating out of five stars. And people are doing the same thing with your brand. But LinkedIn is the, basically the TripAdvisor for professionals. So what, <laughs> this is a good example. Like, what's this line for? I don't know. But everyone's standing here, it must be good. You know, so like my LinkedIn Hero series, which um, Mark mentioned, where I interview entrepreneurs making an impact. Like I've been interviewing these like celebrity entrepreneurs for a while now, and people ask me, well, how do you get like these interviews with these really famous, well-known entrepreneurs? And the reality is, it's just literally because you get one, you get another one. You've got a certain amount of followers, and they go, well, if all these people are following him, it must be good. Yes, we'll do the interview. 
It's no different with your brand when people buy from you. So when you get to a certain level where you have got a lot of followers and you've got a lot of people um, that want to do business with you, you'll find there's less competition. You get to a position where you can charge premium pricing because it's a blue ocean. There's no competitors. You know, people want to do business with a perceived expert, and that's you. Then you can charge what you want. There's no competitors. Like, I, when I started my business five, six years ago, if I w went to, like, a, a potential client, they would be meeting with three or four different LinkedIn trainers, and I'd put my proposal in, and maybe I win, maybe I wouldn't. These days, that doesn't happen anymore. If they come to me, they come because I, they believe that I'm the perceived expert, and I can charge them what they want, and they want to do business with me, and that's it. At the start, when I was posting content to begin with, it was very difficult because people say, well, why are you posting that for? Why are you spending all your time doing content for? And I didn't have any results to show for it. But now, they go, oh, he's so lucky. He's the perceived expert in his industry. So who's posting content on social media on a daily basis just out of curiosity? Keep your hand up if you're doing it on LinkedIn. OK. It doesn't matter whether you do it on LinkedIn or not. Well, I mean, obviously it does, but it depends on your audience, right? It doesn't matter if, if it's on Facebook or Instagram, if your audience is there and you're being social with them on a daily basis in a way that adds value, either through entertainment, inspiration, or education, you're going to build a social connection with your audience. But you've just got to make sure they're hanging out there. I love LinkedIn because it's one of the few places you can get organic reach still. You can do it on Instagram as well. On Facebook, it's pretty much over. Like, you've got to pay to play on Facebook. It doesn't matter if you've got 100,000 followers. You can't reach them unless you invest in it. Sorry, we've got a question. Is the strategy for LinkedIn like what you would do for Instagram or Facebook where your content is designed to enhance your connection desirability? Is that the point? I'm not really that clear on it's a, what it's LinkedIn is for, essentially, and how... Well, con content build. on any f platform is designed yeah. to build a relationship with somebody, right? So you want to build stronger relationships with people through social media. That's it. So if you're putting up content, what type of content is suitable for LinkedIn. I imagine yep. it'd be quite different to what you'd put on Instagram or, or Facebook. Yeah, it is. I mean, the premise of it is the same. It needs to add value. And so there's three ways that you can add value through content. One is entertainment, one is education, and one is inspiration. On LinkedIn, it's a lot more educational content because of the business environment. You've got to think about the context. And also, like on Instagram, right, you scroll through the news feed. What do you see first, the picture or the caption? Picture, right? So the picture has to draw the attention in, and then the caption is where you put the value. On LinkedIn, what's first, the caption or the picture? The caption's first. So if you've got a video that you post on LinkedIn, nobody's going to watch it unless the caption compels them to. So the caption becomes more important to capture attention. And so you might start with a question that maybe the audience doesn't know the answer to, like, you know. Um, <laughs> what's your sales process, right? Most businesses don't have one, right? So it draws the attention in. If somebody does watch your video on LinkedIn, after 10 seconds, 50% of the people that press play are gone, on average. After a minute, 80% are gone. So what do people do generally in the first 10 seconds of their videos? They, say, they put their phone on and they go, oh, hi, it's Nathaniel here. I'm from Bibby Consulting. I thought I'd just jump on here and do a video. 10 seconds, 50% are gone. Right? So you need to jump in with the value straight away. When I first started creating video content, <laughs> this is, I, I got really hung up on my introduction video, right? I had these aerial shots of Sydney and Melbourne, and there was me walking along with my sunglasses on and like meeting <laughs> celebrity entrepreneurs, speaking on stage. No one was interested in any of that crap except me. I thought it was really cool. I still think it is. But none of my audience do, right? <laughs> They're all gone. <laughs> They're there for the content, so you've got to get straight into it. I still will do it. Like, if I'm interviewing somebody, I'll say, oh, you know, hi, this is so-and-so, welcome, blah, 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 blah. But when I go to publish it, I cut all that stuff off. Because no one's interested in all that stuff. OK, I did a, um, I did a uh, seminar for Westpac, 
and it was for their youth network. And so they're all under the age of 30, 150 people in the audience. And I said, put your hand up if you've got a recommendation on your LinkedIn profile. The recommendation is just a testimonial that someone has to submit. And three people put their hand up, all under the age of 30, all computer savvy, probably never licked a postage stamp before. <laughs> and I said, keep your hand up if you've got more than one recommendation on your LinkedIn profile. One person out of 150. So how easy is it to stand out from the crowd if all you need is two recommendations on your LinkedIn profile and you're one in 150? You guys are good at this. OK. So what I want to achieve today is give you a system for lead generation. This is something you can take away and generate leads for immediately. I've had uh, people do this during my talks, where they've literally generated a lead while I'm speaking. But you'll be able to do it. go away and generate leads tonight. It's a three-step process. Find, connect, and engage. And so the way the numbers work, This is what we do for our clients, by the way. This is the biggest area of my business. Is, so if you find, so let's say you find 200 people in your target audience. Let's say you target directors of financial advisory firms, as just as an example, in Sydney. So you find 200 of them, you send them all connection requests on LinkedIn. On average, 50% will accept immediately. So you've got 100 new connections in your ideal demographic, ideal target audience. All you've done is ask them to connect. You haven't asked them to buy from you or get in a phone call or any of that stuff. But then you send them all a message and you say, hey, thank you for connecting. I noticed that you're a financial advisor. We work with financial advisors. I'm interested in finding out more about your business objectives to see if there's an opportunity for us to work together. What's the best number to reach you on? Not all of them are going to say, yeah, let's hop on a call. But on average, between 10 to 30% of people that you contact will. So let's just be ultra conservative. 10 people say, yeah, let's, sure, let's chat. So that's 10 leads. There's no reason why you couldn't do 400 connection requests the next week. And this is free. Like You're not paying any money to LinkedIn to do any of this stuff. They offer you these emails where you can send sales messages to people for free. They convert about 2 to 3%, whereas, as you can see, these convert at 10% conservatively. So it's a lot cheaper to do it for free. And that's just based on the fact that this was a recruitment portal. It was never designed for sales and marketers. So their products don't actually suit you know, the market just yet. On uh, average, 50% of those 10 will be ready to do something now. 50% maybe down the track. And so you just want to find out which of those 50% really quickly and so you can do business with them. But you'll be very quickly, like you'll be so connected to so many financial advisory firms in Sydney that you'll be the perceived expert in that industry quite quickly. So like when you, after you've connected with a 1,000 of them, and you send out the next, connection, the next connection request, you'll see all these mutual connections, and they go, oh, wow, he's connected to all these other people in my industry. He must be the expert. Right? Does that make sense? OK, so who's seen sales letters in their in inbox on LinkedIn? Like this, right? What, what are some of the things you think that this um, person has, has done wrong when they've sent this message? Yep. Yeah, aside from the English, yep. <laughs> so it's all about him, right? It's all about the person sending it. They've shown no interest in the person who's receiving the message. This is straight out of my LinkedIn inbox. And to be honest, I, I've seen, you know, I look in my clients' inboxes, I know what sales letters are sent to people, 90% of them do this wrong. They talk about themselves. No one cares about, you know, you. The one thing that you can be guaranteed that everybody's interested in, in talking about, it's themselves. Guaranteed. So if you don't talk about yourself at all and show interest in the other person, then you're much more likely to get a favourable response. This one's not bad. Um... It's shorter, I like that. The idea is now we're connected, hopefully we can find time for a face-to-face -face just to see if maybe my products might be of value to your clients. So there's one subtle change that would make this a good message, because it's not a good message, and it would be as if you said, just to see if maybe your products might be of value to my clients. 
If you worded it that way, it would get a good response rate because it's, it's talking about the value to the person you're sending it to. You know, this could be somebody in a complementary industry that might deal with the same clients as me. But you're putting the value in the wording um, that benefits the person you're sending it to. Okay, this is an actual example of one of the messages we've sent for one of my clients. So it mentions the connect that we've got connections in common. I've taken a look at your profile. I'm interested in speaking with you and finding about what you do, as there seems to be some synergies between yourself and the clients we typically choose to work with. So when somebody receives a message like that, they're going to wonder, who the hell's Maureen? Right? What does she do? And they'll click on her name and read her profile. So it's very different to a cold call, because when you do a cold call, you have to explain who you are and why you're calling. It's the first thing you do, right? Whereas on LinkedIn, you don't need to do either of those things because they can click on your name and read your profile. And it may seem like a very subtle difference, but when somebody clicks on your name, it's, a, it's an inbound activity, right? Because they've asked for the information, therefore they're more likely to consume it rather than you pushing it onto them, which is basically an outbound activity. Most people don't want to be sold to. Most people want to be helped. Generally, you'll find that if people have the problem that you solve, they want to buy. They've got a problem. They want to solve it. They want to buy. They just don't want to be sold to. So help them buy. Don't sell to them. On social media, if you help people, you'll find you get a much better response than if you sell to them. People want to do business with people that help them buy. Help people buy. Don't sell to them. So Maureen, I'll just give you, share this story with you. She was, a, um, she was selling real estate to uh, people in Singapore, Australian real estate. And she thought, oh, it's a shame that LinkedIn's not going to work for me because you know, real estate is pretty much B2C. It's not B2B. Therefore, you know, how's it going to work for me? And what, what we decided to do is we targeted CEOs that were based in Singapore that went to university in Australia. So there's a good chance they'd be interested in Australian property. Invited them to an event about Australian real estate in Singapore. And within a few days, she almost doubled her network and had 10 qualified leads. She still uses this strategy today to sell real estate, to funnel people into events. And in the last uh, few weeks, LinkedIn have introduced an events feature. Does anybody run events for their business at all? Okay, well, if you run events, check out LinkedIn events. It's, it's a pretty cool way to get a lot of people to an event. I used it over three days, over a weekend, and Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, we managed to get 850 people registered for each city by using LinkedIn events. All it does is invites people in your network, and instead of, when, when you normally get connection requests, and it says, oh, you know, Maureen wants to be your connection on LinkedIn, it says, Nathaniel would like to invite you to this event, and you press accept or not. It's a pretty powerful way to market to your network if you, if you are running events. Um, but you can do that same thing with a private message, right? Invite them to, to an event. And it makes them feel like quite special that you've taken the time to send them an individual message. Because a lot of this stuff's not automated. However, it can be systemized. So one of the reasons that um, you know, my business has done so well is we've systemized it for businesses to outsource to us to do lead generations. Because when I was generating leads, when I go back to that story, when I was sending out 10 messages to a surgeon and 20 messages the next week, and we grew that business so quickly, it's because I systemized it. I gave the scripts to an assistant for her to send out on my behalf. Nothing was left to initiative. You know, it's, it's the same script that's going out, but, and it's not automated, it's systemized. And then I thought, well, why can't we do that for customers? So instead of the client sitting there and sending the messages themselves, they outsource to us. 95% of the people that I've trained on LinkedIn marketing think that, that it's fantastic and they think that what I'm teaching them is very valuable, but they don't implement it. 95% do not implement it. Why not? Well, it's time. It takes time to do, right? And also because they're, they're afraid of doing something wrong. You know? It's interesting, like, with this private messaging stuff is pretty straightforward, but with content, like, people are afraid to post because they're afraid of doing something wrong but you learn how to create engaging content by posting. It's actually about making mistakes quicker. OK, so how did it work with Maureen? So we're getting into quite a bit of detail here. But on the advanced people search, right, 
you can target exactly these fields. So like, what's the job title? Third one down, director, CEO. What school do they go to? Monash University. What location? Singapore. Industry, finance, legal, banking. Interested in property investments. Groups, real estate investment Australia. That's how granular you can get with the search results. So we sent 500 connection requests for Maureen. This is in the first month we ran this campaign. We had 277 people accept. And they all got the message inviting them to the seminar. 42 people said yes, confirmed, and showed up to the seminar. OK. What have we got here? we do this again? Cool. Um, I want to spend a bit of time now on, on Q&A, because I'm sure you guys have got a lot of questions. Put your hand up if you've got some questions, and we'll get the mics running around. Hi. Um, just a question in respect to premium versus just the normal um, LinkedIn yep. membership. Is there pros, cons? Is it worthwhile? Yeah, generally, like you'll find that if you're using the normal LinkedIn, that you'll run into some limitations if you're using it to generate leads. You don't need a premium account to generate leads, though, like to, to actually get a return on investment. So if you're just starting out on LinkedIn, a free account is absolutely fine. It's just when you start to you know, reach a point where you're looking at too many profiles in a day, or if you specifically want to search by things like the size of a company, you need to upgrade to do that. But other than that, you can use a free account to, to get the result. Okay, cool. Yep. Thanks. Are there any parameters on the amount of people you can friend request? Because I know like Instagram, yep. they're like, ooh, slow down, stop messaging people. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what LinkedIn is concerned about is if a lot of people are saying, no, I don't know this person, or this, even worse, this person is spam. And so if you get too many of those, then you'll be restricted. Just to give you an idea, so I know where the boundaries are because none of my clients have ever been restricted by LinkedIn, but I've been banned eight times, I think it is now. So, so I do know where the boundaries are. <laughs> that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> so the way to manage that, if you are sending a lot of connection requests out, is um, once a connection request has been pending for three or four weeks, you can withdraw it. So I actually go through all my pending connection requests and all the old ones, I just withdraw them. Because no one's going to accept after three or four weeks. And that way I manage it so that there's not too many outstanding. Do you then re-request or you just move along? Just move along, yeah. Okay. There's so many people out there, right, to target. <laughs> they probably end up getting requested to at some point. Um, so I'm trying to build my business as a brand and not myself you know, for future sale and that sort of thing. Um, how, this, this strategy is about me connecting with people. Can you talk to that a little bit? So say that again. I don't want to build myself as a brand. I want to build my business as a brand. But yep. I have to use LinkedIn, my personal profile, to connect with people. But I don't want to build myself as a brand. How big is the how business? How do I do it? Um, in the space we we're in, we're a good size. Yeah. Is, like is there other salespeople or? That they're transient. Okay. Yeah, it looks a tough one. Like on social media, you're always going to get better results, especially as a small business, as a personal brand. Because this is one thing that the big companies don't have, right? That they can't compete with is you've got a personal brand, a small business. It's social media platforms. You're never going to get the same result. If I approach you as a company, you know, and say, hey, how are you going? What are you up to? Like, no one wants to talk to a company, right? They want to talk to an individual. So you can build up salespeople within your organization, but you, then you run the risk that they're going to like, leave and take their whole network with them. And so you know, it, it is a question that comes up a lot, but if you're going to be active on social media, personal branding is the most effective way to do it. Yeah. Thank you. So with all the messages that you sent out, like the invites, you write a bit of a blurb introducing yourself. If you're inviting 500 people, that's going to take like, what, a week? 
to write all the messages. To 100 people? No, 500 people. Like, there would be a lot of messages that you have to do. So copy pasting, but still. 500 people takes my team five hours. Yeah. 100 people an hour? Yeah. How many people have you got on your team to do that? Oh, it's for that, just one person doing oh, that. Oh, one person, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just copy and paste, right? And <laughs> you just got to put their first name in. And do you outsource that? Like, that could be systemized and just ask somebody elsewhere. Yeah, yeah you, you outsource it, yeah. yeah. You delegate it. Yeah. Cool. Delegate yeah. it to someone in your team, to a company like mine. You can go offshore <laughs> if you want to. So you just got to make sure you manage the quality, right? Because you can't afford to make mistakes in this area. Yeah. Sorry, I'm still having trouble with what we were talking about before. Because yep. on all social media platforms, I'm trying to keep it consistent that we're having the Crocus Paint and Wallpaper social media, Instagram, Facebook, and then obviously the LinkedIn one that's sitting there doing nothing. So I would, <laughs> I would like to think that we're showing the same thing across everywhere, but the way I'm getting LinkedIn is it has to be slightly different. But why can't we speak as the family to our audience? Because I don't want it to be just me. I mean, there's Sean as well. Like, if the two of us are doing different things to me, it doesn't... It feels like we're spreading everything out too much. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Something? I do, yeah. yeah. So, how could we, how, what would the strategy be in order to keep the LinkedIn as crockers? Look, so the company page can be the same and it can be generic content. What I'm suggesting is you're going to get more engagement through personal profiles and also by growing your network on your personal profiles. So I think you use that as a foundation and then you sh amplify that content with your personal profiles and use it as a networking tool. So, so if we have our personal ones, we're kind of speaking about our business. Correct, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. Hi. Um, is there any benefit in using your first degree connections to introduce you to connections within their group of people as yep. a strategy, perhaps? Yep. Is that more, do you get better results and better numbers from that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, like, it's a speed thing. So, like, if I can send 100 connection requests at the same time, I can get one person to introduce me, I'll do that. Because it's the fact that they can see you as mutual connections is almost, it, it has some of that similar value. Like, it's... It's a little bit like um, if you're in a networking function and you guys know that you both know the same people and you shake hands, like they're not going to be rude to you, right? If you know, you know that you've got the same mutual connections. So for me, it's a speed thing. You've got to, you've got to weigh up quantity and quality, you know, decide where you sit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, walk us through outsourcing then. So if I went to your company and said I wanted to outsource my LinkedIn marketing, would I then hand over access to my personal page to one of your staff members. Yeah, you would, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> your laugh is awesome, man. But, but this is the thing, right? There's nothing left to initiative. Like, any, anything we do is going to be, you're going to just, we're going to show you who the people we're going to reach out to, what we're going to say to them, and then any replies that come back, it's over to you. We're not going to be coming up with replies based on, like, pretending to be you. So it's just like we're an extension of, of what you're already doing. We come up with a strategy, who we're going to target, what we're going to say to the people. We even give you the list of people that you know, we're going to contact. And, and then, yeah, we'll do it for you. Yeah. So one of your packages is, um, if I understand this correctly, is you work with us through our profile and how we're actually going to market to them yeah. and help us design the messages. Correct. Yeah. And then that would be scripted and your team will go with it. Yeah, that's right. Because I, I want you guys to get, like, I want my clients to get the results. So uh, it's not enough for me to just teach them how to do it, because 95% of them don't do it, right? I've actually got to get in there and do it for them, and then they're going to they're get the result and grow their business. And then you've got to learn, like, how to, what to say to these people on the phone. So how do you, what do you say when you do call up somebody? So you say, like, the purpose of this phone call is to find out a bit more of business, to see if there's an opportunity for us to do business together, frame the conversation so they know what to expect. I know you guys have done a lot to do with um, Oren and Pitch Anything today. That guy is, uh, that guy is ideal for LinkedIn marketing. He knows exactly how to frame a conversation so that people feel comfortable enough to tell you the information that you need to find out if they've got the problem that you solve. And, and then you're away to the races. Because you don't want to do business with people that don't have the problem you solve. There's just too many people out there that do have the problem. You don't want to talk people into something that they don't want to do. You just want to find out who's got the problem quickly so that you can, you can meet their needs. How much does it cost to do it with you? 
two grand a month. Yeah. Yep. Who's got a microphone? Oh, right here. Uh, so my core deliverable is web design and SEO, yep. which when I say that today to people who ask what I do, I realise how generic it is. Um, so there's a lot of strategy involved in that that informs what I then do. But I'm just thinking that's just going to be a hard pitch anywhere on social media, surely, because it's just so overdone. Well, well everyone needs it, right? But it, everyone, you know, the next thing anyone would ever say when you bring that up is, oh, I get emails every day or I'm contacted every day. So how do you differentiate? I mean, I can do it with content and maybe industry... Focus, Educate so. people. Look, I'm from the digital marketing industry, right? And I cannot find a good web developer. I need my website redone. So if, somebody, if I was following somebody that had content that was, like, who positioned themselves as a perceived expert, I would naturally want to do business with them. SEO is exactly the same thing. There's so much rubbish out there. You know? There's so much crap out there. You can differentiate yourself very easily by putting educational content that shows people you actually know what you're talking about. So how to see the rubbish? Sorry? <laughs> how to see the rubbish. <laughs> yeah. How to stand out from the crowd. No worries. I'll we'll have to get your card later. <laughs> yep. Hi, I just had a question around the type of content. So with um, educational, inspirational, is it about the work that you do as a company? Yeah, so it doesn't have to be. You can add value by educating people about all sorts of things. It doesn't necessarily have to be about your business. I found that the winning formula is you educate people by adding value and then you share the results that you've got for your customers rather than selling. Like is with, a, with an image? Or a video, yep. Or, or even an article. If there's introverts in the room, articles are great. They do really well on LinkedIn. But if you share the results that your customers got, it's about them, you know? You're bigging the customer up. Look at the, look at the results they've achieved. Yes, they did it through doing business with me, but they've achieved it, so it's not about you ranting and raving about yourself. Has anybody here heard of the mere exposure effect? A few of you, yeah. So it's something I learned from a guy called Kerwin Ray. Is that a familiar name to anyone? No. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I mentioned his name last night, and no, no one knew who he was at the seminar I was speaking at. But Kerwin Ray says... That the mere exposure effect, basically, is a psychological phenomenon that basically says that the more times that brand or are exposed to a brand, the more likely you are to do business with them and trust them. And so in the old days, it was three or four exposures. Now it's 23 exposures. And so if you show somebody 23 exposures through social media, they're more likely to buy from you because they'll build trust with you. However, if you show somebody 23 calls to action, they're gonna, you know, you're going to piss them off, right? And so it's going to have a negative effect. And so you've got to be careful about talking about yourself too much and appearing like a dickhead, right? And you want to add value, talk about the results that you get for your customers. Much more effective way to do it. Then you can do 20, 23 exposures and they'll actually like you at the end of it. Is there a particular etiquette on LinkedIn? Like mentioning before, not going back to a previous... A uh, request for connection, um, a type of language. Is there a particular sort of? Yeah, I, I think it comes down it? to your brand, really, like and, and your audience, like what you're comfortable with. If there is an etiquette on LinkedIn, I, I probably don't follow it. Like I use swear words, I do a lot of things I shouldn't do on LinkedIn. Um, I, the reason I don't go at, at people and can send them more than one message is because there's so many other people out there, and I find the conversion rates are just as good. I don't really want to keep annoying somebody. If somebody doesn't want to do business with me. That's, that, that's fine. They're probably not the right client for me. There's so many other people out there that, don't, that do. So that's just the way that I choose to do it for my own brand. Yeah. Get me five minutes. <laughs> um, so with what you were saying about uh, sending the, the, the message to people about what you can do for them. So we're in... Obviously, we have a lot of... Um, videos that we take at work that we show people how to do things, like as in DIY, how to paint a deck and just to put you in the picture. Is that the type of thing that you're... Because yep. what you said before is about don't talk about you all the time. Well, that is us. That's, that's us doing what we know how to do. So yep. 
But it is helping value. other people. But yeah. is that the kind of thing that LinkedIn likes? Because I know that Facebook likes it. Yeah, they do, yeah. yeah so do. are we on the same kind of page or should we tweak it to... No, no, that's, that's ideal, yeah. Is that? When I say don't talk about you all the time, I mean make sure the content's adding value. That's all I mean. It's not that it's self-serving, oh, like thanks. look at me, I'm awesome, like this makes me feel good. That's not what not to do. You want to like add value. So what is, how, what's the benefit to the audience? And, yeah, those how-to well, videos sort of are te ideal. Well, teaching them, I guess. Exactly, exactly. Teachers, That's perfect. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, I use LinkedIn a bit, so I'll just share the strategy I've been using because there's a lot of trade businesses here. So I own a scaffolding company. I'm very specific that I work for tier two companies. Um, I've gone and added... You can look up the companies, say Hutchinson Builders. Every trade, like myself, Mick... We win jobs from project managers, contract administrators. We also like to have the foreman on board and the workplace health and safety officer. So you can literally go to the top 20 companies that you want to work for. You can search for contract administrators, McNab, Queensland. Add them all and you just keep growing the network from builder to builder to builder. And when I post, I never post. I'll, I'll post and sort of what you were saying before about Facebook. If I went on to LinkedIn and went, um, I just want to thank my guys for doing a great job, it's sort of, it's sort of all right. But if I go onto Facebook, I normally go onto LinkedIn, I tag the builder and I'll, say, and I'll fly my drone around, I'll go, this is a job we've just done for Condev. They've done an excellent job. I'll more so say how great the builder's doing because then the builder's going to like it and share it, which they do. But if I go onto Facebook and say, Builders don't like my Facebook page. Scaffolders like my Facebook page. So if I go onto Facebook and go, the builder's done an awesome job and I don't mention anything about my guys doing a good job, they're just going to think I'm an asshole. <laughs> so the, the, the wording is different on both platforms. But to make it simple, like it's just work out who your target is or who the companies are and just work out that job role. Like if it is, mine is a project manager. Just go add every project manager for the builders that you want. And it, you know, 100%. it works. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's great value add, yep. Yep. Does um, LinkedIn have any algorithms at all attached to itself like Facebook and Instagram? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, they're all, all these social media sites, they want to give their users a good experience, right? So the algorithm's objective is just to show you the content that you want so keep you on the platform. And so... One of the easiest ways to do that is through engagement. So they look at how many likes and comments you get on your content, and then people that follow you or connect with you are likely to see your content at the top. So it is important, if you are posting content, to get engagement relatively quickly on your content. It should be authentic engagement, because what's going to happen is the algorithm's only going to get smarter. It's very similar to what I was telling you the story about when I moved to Hong Kong, and I went from page one on Google to page 100. All that happened is Google got smarter to sh show people more relevant, because I was using techniques which are considered black hat, right? I was manipulating the search results. And so if you manipulate the, the social media news feed, eventually the algorithm will get smarter and your content won't do as well. So you want to be like getting authentic engagement really fast and you'll show up really well in the, in the um, news feed. And so when I talk about organic content doing well on LinkedIn and you being able to get free reach, this is what I'm talking about, is the algorithm is still showing like f people that haven't sponsored ads at the top of the news feed, whereas on Facebook, you know, they, they've tried to monetize it. They look, Facebook, in the last year, is the first time that they've lost market share. And what's interesting is that the people that are coming off of Facebook are the younger guys, which means that the trend's likely to continue. Does that make sense? Mm. Well, you just got to see what's working for you, right? Um, I, I'm always, my content is a lot to do with this. It's about the algorithm updates and stuff. So follow my content, you'll probably get some insights from me. Um, but it's about testing and measuring, being a practitioner, being there and seeing what works, what doesn't. You've got to keep on top of it because it's always changing. But I think as a general rule, if you align your objectives with the objectives of the platform, which is to give its users a good experience, you can't really come unstuck because in the long run, th their changes to the algorithm are always going to map to that. Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, with our Facebook, obviously, we're trying to drive people a bit to our website as well. 
Um, and I'm seeing that you're all about the personal connection, maybe less so the company uh, visibility on the LinkedIn or the company page. Are you really all about just creating a face-to-face -face or a phone call situation, or are you trying to drive them to your website to see your stuff as well? What's, what's the focus there? Um, so I want to bring the discussion offline, so off, off of LinkedIn, really. Um, you don't want to be going back and forth having discussions about business on LinkedIn. So one strategy is you pull them off onto a telephone call. It's the one thing you can do on LinkedIn which you can't do on another platform. Like on Instagram, if you follow somebody and say, hey, you know, I follow you, I'm really interested in what you do, can I have your phone number? <laughs> it's not going to work, right? Which is a big no-no. Whereas on LinkedIn, it's more appropriate. So on Instagram, if you want to pull the conversation offline, you have what they call as a lead magnet, right? Lead magnet is something that, you know, they go to your website, they fill in a form and they've got something free that they can download and that's where you capture their details and pull the conversation offline. And that works on LinkedIn as well. I'll give you a quick hack because we've only got five minutes um, with the lead magnet stuff. It, when you post uh, offering something like, I offer like a free LinkedIn prospecting kit, for example, right? And so normally what you would do is you'd have the link to the prospecting kit and anyone who's interested would go to that link. What I'd do now is i say, anybody who would like the prospecting kit, comment below with yes, please. And so all of a sudden, instead of 100 people just firing off of LinkedIn to go get the kit, they comment first, which means the engagement of that post is a lot higher. 10 times as many people see the content, therefore I get about 10 times the result. And then everyone who's commented yes, please, I send them a private message with the link. So they still get the link, they still go to the, you know, I still get their email address, but I get 10 times the engagement. Does that make sense? That's a really cool hack. Not many people do that. It's a way to get a lot of um, email addresses really quickly and a lot of eyeballs on your content. I think we've got time for one more, perhaps. So one more question before we wrap up. You were saying before you'd done interviews with like entrepreneurs and stuff. Is that YouTube? They're all on YouTube. Um, the this, this series is called LinkedIn Heroes, so I post them on LinkedIn as well. That's where they get the most traction. I've got the biggest audience there. Um, but their long-form content all ends up on YouTube. Yeah, go check them out. LinkedIn Heroes is the playlist. Got some really cool uh, interviews on there, and uh, I'll be inter interviewing Sean later on tonight, which would be awesome. Beauty, cheers. It's probably a good place to finish. Awesome. <laughs> well Thanks done. Thanks very much. Fantastic. <laughs>